tonight's class, we're going to talk about the basics of CBD. I know there's a lot of people that question what it is, um, if they should be using it. There's so much on the market, just like there is with essential oils. And I think this class is going to help to possibly clarify a lot for you. I'm Barbara Cassidy. And again, I always thank you for joining my classes and I will try to be very mindful of time. So let's go ahead and get going. So the use of the medical cannabis, medical marijuana and cannabis oil it's exploded, really exploded in the United States. And its popularity, it's gained interest in clinics, in patients, in regulators, and even in green entrepreneurs. With the new brands and the products and the health claims and education, seriously, this product is popping up absolutely everywhere. Cannabis stativa, or it's called marijuana, has a long history of being one of the most commonly used illicit drugs in the world. It can be used for both medicinal and recreational uh, purposes. So historically, cannabis has been used for at least 5,000 years. That blew my mind. 5,000 years in, it's now, it was originated basically at that in Romania and China. Cannabis was widely used as medicine in the 19th and 20th centuries in the United States and was described as a pain reliever, a sleep aid, and an anti-convulsant. Anti -convulsant. That was hard to say. Cannabis, it was prohibited in 1939 and the passage of the, with the passage of the Marijuana Tax Act, legal pen penalties for the possession increased in 1950s and marijuana was prohibited completely in 1970 with the passage of the Controlled Substance Act. These legislative actions not only criminalized marijuana, but also limited research and the academic inquiry on the subject. The passage of the 2018 Agricultural Improvement Act made CBD legal nationwide if the product is derived from hemp and contains less than 0.3% THC. The cannabinoid system, which is also called the ECS system, so you'll hear me say ECS, that plays a vital regulatory, regulatory role in a variety of the psychotic and cognate processes. So a cannabinoid is a compound that interacts with the ECS via receptor sites. There are two receptor sites in the system. One is a cannabinoid receptor one called the CB1 and the cannabinoid receptor two, which is referred to as a CB2. Now the difference between these two receptors, it's really, really important to understand on helping you rather understand on how the various cannabinoids affect our bodies. So, cannabinoid 1 receptors exist mainly in the brain. They, also, they are also rather expressed in the liver, the thyroid, the uterus, the bones, and the testicular tissues. So, the function of the CB1 receptor is to mediate major neurotransmitter systems. The CB, CB1 is involved in several body systems, such as the as cognition, your memory, neoplasticity, the sense of smell, as well as motor movements, stress response, gastrointestinal function, cardiovascular activity, drug addictions, and pain perception. 
the cannabinoid 2 receptors are mostly expressed in immune cells. They play a primary role in the immune system, but also target smooth muscle cells, cataract muscles, and the nerves within the peripheral and the central nervous system. So, cannabinoid 1 is mainly in the brain. Cannabinoid 2 is mostly expressed in the immune system. If you, I mean, that's a simple way to break it down. So let's talk the difference between hemp and the marijuana plant. There are three main types of cannabis plants. Cannabis sativa, cannabis indica, and cannabis rudalis. So the cannabis stevia is the most commonly plant that is cultivated for THC and the CBD. Hemp and marijuana plants come from the same species of plant, but they are not the same exact plant. They have different characteristics which can cross-pollinate, so which makes it why they belong to the same species. Their chemical composition is what makes them different though. Both plants produce high amounts of CBD. However, they produce THCs at different levels. So hemp can contain no more than 0.3% THC, where marijuana can contain up to 30%. That's a huge difference between the two plants. Hemp plants produce CBD oil, hemp oil, and cannabis oil, and are properly used for your textiles, seeds, and oils. These plants also can grow as high as 20 feet with leaves bunched near the top of the stem. Marijuana plants produce THC oil, marijuana oil, and cannabis oil, and primarily it's used for recreation. We used rec, rec you know, I get so tongue twisted sometimes, recreationally. The plant itself is shorter, it's bush-like, with more leaves and buds surrounding the, body's, the plant's body. It requires intensive care in an isolated, warm, and humid environment. So what is the difference between THC and CBD? THC is the more abundant cannabinoid in the cannabis plant, followed by cannabinoid, which is your CBD. They have the exact same chemical formula with slightly different structures. They interact with the receptor sites in the brain very differently. The thought of lock and key is often used to explain how they interact with the different receptors. The THC key fits into the CB1 receptor lock and turns it on, which triggers a response that stops the release of other neurotransmitters. Thereby, it's protecting the brain from too much ex excite ex excitation. I'm sorry, my um, computer's going crazy here. Okay, so they, uh, let's see. They have the, and let's see, where am I at now? Okay, so this is one of the ma many reasons why THC is such a remarkable therapeutic substance. When the THC key binds directly to the CB1 receptor, it causes a release of the dopamine, which creates the effects of getting high. This causes the feelings of that utopia, the decreased inhibitation, in, inhibitions, alterations, and perception, in perceptions, and all the other effects that come with that. CBD parks at a different docking site on the CB1 receptors. It attaches to what's known as allosteretic. It's a binding site. When the CBD key is placed in a in the allosteretic receptor, it does not initiate a signaling cascade like THC, but it does impact on how the CB1 receptor 
responds to simulation, uh, stimulation by the THC. The two most common ways that CBD is extracted are CO2 extraction with solvents. CO2 extraction involves the use of the carbon monoxide, which undergoes extremely low temperatures and increased pressure, causing it to have the properties of a gas and a liquid. Next, it passes through the chamber that has the raw cannabis material and gently dissolves the membrane of the plant to release its active compounds. Then, the CO2 and the cannabis oil particles, they funnel into a pressurized separator where the CO2 evaporates from the mixture. Solvent extraction, that soaks the raw cannabis, cannabis, cannabis material in ethanol to pull compounds into the solvents. Following extraction, the plant material is removed and the alcohol is evaporated out. Which of these two extractions is better? Well, I guess it would depend on who you ask because CO2 involves the use of high pressure and temperatures. Some people feel that it destroys the chemical constituents of the plant. Others that prefer the CO2 method, be, uh, method because the solvent extraction destroys the cannabis waxes, which contain the flavonoids and the, um, the carotenoids. So there are several types of CBD oil, from full spectrum to the enhanced CBD isolate. Which one to choose can be super overwhelming. Every person reacts differently to CBD and THC, and legalities from state to state affect the availability of products. So you may need to know for sure which one is best, you probably may not know rather which one's going to be best for you until you try it. But whatever you choose, you have to start slowly and gradually increasing the dose after, after you see how it affects you. The full spectrum C CBD also, known as the whole plant CBD, contains all the compounds that naturally occur in the plant. There are over 100 different cannabinoids in the plant. Full spectrum products typically contain higher THC levels than the other types of extractions. This is going to pose possibly a problem in some states or for those users who do not want THC to show up on screenings or tests. Your broad spectrum CBD goes through the processing to remove as much THC as possible, well, pre-service the other natural cannabinoids and the terpenes. CBD isolate is an extraction of the single compound of the CBD. Everything else in the plant is removed, including traces of THC, terpenes, waxes, oils, etc. Enhanced CBD isolate it utilizes the isolate extraction method for the concentrated CBD oil and then adds in other compounds. For example, the addition of essential oils creates a chemical profile similar to the broad spectrum without the risk of that THC contamination. The hemp plant is known as the phytomediator with, and this means that it's vacuums, it vacuums toxins, including heavy metals, radioactive materials, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, explosives, and fuels from the soil. This is super important as to why you should be looking at the farming practices of a company that you choose a product from. I personally do not want those heavy metals and the radioactive material, pesticides, fungicides, et cetera, in anything that I personally put in my body. Cannabis can be consumed in multiple ways. The most common are inhalation by smoking and vaporization, oral products such as oils, tinctures, prescriptions, cannabinoids, um, edibles, 
topical creams, ointments, lozenges, or lollipops. Choosing a CBD product that is right for you can be really super challenging. So you want to, you want to choose a product that's going to target the body system that is right for you, that you're looking to, to impact. So if you want a product for the muscular skeletal system, choose a rub, a balm, or any other topical product. If you wanted to support the gastrointestinal or the nervous system and oral products, that may be your best option. So these are a few guidelines that when it comes to the dosing of your CBD, it is again always best to start with any new product with a very low dosage and increase it slowly. You wanna monitor items like concentration, mood, or if you're using a product for a desired result, that's what you're going to monitor. Recommended starting doses of CBD can range from 10 milligrams to 40 milligrams. And if you have never consumed CBD, it really is best to start at that lower end of the range. So all of that being said, we want to look at what you can use, what you should use, versus what you can't be using, especially depending on the state you live in. So a great example that I just recently gave somebody that was not using Young Living, I mentioned to him, if you were to get in an accident and that CBD that you are using has a trace of THC in it, you're in trouble. And he looked at me and I said, seriously, that is something you need to consider. Not saying that you could get into an accident or something, but if you should, that is a factor. So you definitely want to pay attention to what you're putting on your person according to the state you live in. The other thing is where I talked about it earlier, you do need to know your farmer. You need to know where that product was growing because marijuana grows rampant in just about any place that it's planted. You have no idea where the runoff is coming from. Also, one of the largest importers of CBD is coming in in huge drums from China. So again, you want to know your farmer. You want to know that it has the zero, which Young Living guarantees there is absolutely zero THC in their product. And yes, to put the terpenes back into the CBD oil, they are adding essential oil, which in turn, as we know, that makes things bioaccumulative, bio, um, it just makes it easier for your body to process. So, Again, know your farmer. You can, if you do not have a Young Living account, you can purchase, purchase a starter CBD kit with Young Living for $165. That's like getting three products for the price of two. It's a great way to get started. If the person that you want to definitely get with the person rather that ask you to view, view this video, they will help you, they will educate you. If you don't have somebody that referred you, please reach out to me and I will pair you with somebody that will be able to assist you and educate you because this product, just like all of, of every Young Living's other products, you really have to know what you're doing and work with somebody that's gonna to help to educate you. So that said, I hope there was a lot of science I talked about, but there's a lot of people that they want to hear that science. So 
I hope it helped you. I hope it made sense to you. Please, please reach out to myself again or the person that referred you to this video and we can help you further should you have any other questions. But again, with this product, just don't go down to the store and buy it because you don't know what you're buying. So I do want to thank you again for your time. And again, I really don't like to go too windy because I know all of our time is so precious right now. So may you have blessings, wellness, purpose, and abundance. <laughs>